Um, Rich Roberts is here. here. Ryan Allard. Here. Joseph Hammer here. James, Jim Hughes. George Jim's Oichel. Coming. Jim's just coming. coming in. Yeah. Okay. Jim is here. George Oichel. Yes, I'm here. And Jim is here. How about George? I don't see him. Okay. Tom Dean. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Mike Vieira. Here. David Drake. Here. Peter Lambruni. Here. Hazim Korkatovic. Okay. All right, so I come up with nine. Um, so we'll see Dave Drake and Pete Lambruni for right now. The, uh, we have, doesn't say that these are public hearings, but I guess they all are because they're all special permits. Um, the way we'll do public hearings is first hear from the applicant then the commission might have questions for the applicant. There'll be some back and forth. Um, at that point, we will open it up to members of the public who wish to speak either in favor of or against the application or who might have questions. Uh, following that, we'll go back to the applicant, let them respond to any of the comments that came up. Uh, let the members of the commission ask any questions that they might have based on the public commentary. If um, following all of that discussion, the commission feels that it has enough information to uh, make a decision on the application. Uh, we will close the public hearing and deliberate on it. If for whatever reason we don't feel we have enough information uh, or there are questions that remain to be answered, uh, we may continue the hearing to a later date um, and we'll tell you what time and what date that will be here uh, if we do do that. So with that, uh, we'll do the first item 3.1, um, application 2089-21Z, Aaron Tupont, 147 Main Street, seeking special use permit in accordance with section 52D1 for the conversion of the building for retail and personal service business for a wellness and Reiki center at Okay, hi. Um, thank you for your time this evening. My name is Erin Tupont and I own 147 Main Street in Old Wethersfield. Um, I'm applying for a change in use from residential to business at this location. Um, I'm currently a Reiki master teacher, I'm a certified hypnotherapist, and I'm looking to open a wellness center here. Um, and a small gift shop selling crystals, stones, um, books, other small items. Um, the wellness center will include up to four other practitioners and um, each, with, e each of which will be uh, completing one-on-one -on -one sessions at varying times. Uh, the gift shop will accommodate existing Main Street foot traffic and clients um, and the number of visitors at any given time will be somewhat minimal. Uh, given such, I'm applying for approval under section 6.2.D in the parking uh, requirements for a reduction in the required number of parking spaces. Uh, for the past several years, I've been working from 135 Main Street. Many of you know that to be the herbal room, uh, the red barn. During that time, I've been instructing my clients to use the public parking because the woman that owns that building is not keen on people parking back there. Um, all of my clients have been doing that without problem. Um, a part of my process is to remind them at the time of booking, they must use the free lots. Uh, I also have a scheduling system that uh, reminds clients before they come in that uh, they have to park in the free parking. And there's also a, a very big blurb on my website. I am fully aware of the parking issues that have been going on in Old Wethersfield. I live here as well on Church Street. It's not my intention to add to any neighborhood concerns, uh, but I do want to add to the area. You know, uh, 147 Main was a frame shop years ago, and uh, another owner took it on for a couple years and kind of let it go back to residential. But I would like to 
bring it back and have some use for the community. I'm planning on calling it the Blackbird House, kind of in honor of the Witch of Blackbird Pond and kind of playing in some of uh, the history of the town. Um, so any visitors that would be coming to 147 Main Street will be required to use the free parking at both Keeney Memorial Center and the firehouse. Okay. Um, how many employees do you have? I have no, there will be no employees. I'll be subleasing um, to other practitioners. Um, I, I pretty much work on my own. Sounds like this is um, like mostly one on one, not necessarily like classes. You're not bringing in groups of people, except like, you know, maybe here and there. But by and large, your your daily activity is just going to be four like four people, four practitioners working at the same time, each with one client. So the most people we can expect is four people needing parking spaces. And that would be the most because um, typically people don't practice, don't hold sessions at the same time. So, <clears> so <throat> it would be an in and out hour sessions at a time. Um, but yeah, it would be very limited with the amount of people in and out of the building. And I wouldn't even see that we'd have all four people there at all, all the time, you know, because just of people's schedules. Perfect, thank you. What, um... What days of the week and hours of the day would you plan to operate? Um, well, I, being a practitioner, there is some flexibility. Um, nothing past, you know, uh, I don't, I don't schedule an appointment past six o'clock at night, but you know, appointments can run anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half. Um, some weekend use, but nothing. I mean, I would be flexible. I'm flexible with my schedule. I'd be flexible with them, uh, anyone that wanted to work out of here, but I would think it would be more like a nine to five situation with maybe some available evenings. So just as an example, I know Friday night, you know, there's a nearby restaurant. So there's probably a peak demand then, but it sounds like when they're getting into dinner, you would be closing probably on Friday. And similarly, Saturday night, it sounds like you're not going to be open either, right? So Not at all. Um, honestly, with the noise sometimes that comes from the Charles, I wouldn't want to be practicing at that time. As much as you do noise control, they do, there is some sound that comes off of the Charles. Um, so yes, it, it, night times would not be ideal for anyone being open at that point. Thank you. Um, the gift shop would be mostly during the day on weekends where there's a lot of foot traffic. <laughs> you know, events like holidays on Maine, that type of thing. And is the, I'm sorry, the gift shop, will there be a staff person in there? No, well? it would just be open when I'm there. No, I, I'm not planning on staffing that at all. Okay. Erin, can you, can you just um, explain a little bit uh, what the other four people will be doing? Are they doing Reiki as well? Is um, it, is it I'm, five I'm practitioners of Reiki? No, I don't think so. What um, ideally what I'd like to see happen is I'd like to get now I'm, I'm friendly with the natural path. So obviously, I'm not going to do that to Dr. Reale. I, I really like him. But I would like to get one person that you know, it has like a naturopathic, um, I'd like different modalities. I, I don't have, um, I haven't gone that far to figure out who yet. Um, but possibly some acupuncture or um, not all Reiki because it wouldn't make a lot of sense, although I wouldn't say no to that. I think it really just depends. I would like a therapist possibly, you know, people that can do one-on-one -on -one sessions that might like a nice location and a beautiful house to do it in or okay. building. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to understand, I, I think you've answered my question, is that the other practitioners will also be low volume Right, yeah. they're, they're not. They're not going to be turning customers out every ten minutes. Let's say. Or oh no, minutes. no. Each of these sessions that people give would be at least an hour. Yeah, if at, at, at between an hour and an hour and a half, at the most. It's not like people are going to be coming in and out all the time, and you can't do back to back sessions either. It takes a lot of um, energy. So, I, I. I definitely think that, you know, anyone, these would be people that would be meeting um, for an hour or so at a time. Yeah, just, just one other quick question. In your present operation, you, you said that you've uh, asked people to park either in the street or probably at Keeney 
or one of the other places. Have you uh, gotten any pushback, any complaints from, from people because of that? Do you I don't even ask them to park on the streets because I, you know, especially because I understand um, I have them park at the Keeney Center or the firehouse, mostly the Keeney Center because people don't really understand the firehouse parking at this point, but I've gotten, gotten pushback from one person. Uh, they're very flexible and very open and they like to walk through the town, you know, so a lot of people come and, you know, they'll come for an hour session with me and then go get lunch or something. So they usually like to take time to walk through town. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the commission have questions? I guess I have a quick one for Peter. Um, with the various kinds of professionals and practitioners that she described all fall within professional services and none of them would be medical, which might have different requirements? Yeah, our, our definition of medical is pretty generic. So uh, we felt that uh, fitting it into the personal services category was uh, uh, probably the better definition uh, for this. Uh, I mean, I didn't hear about the therapist until tonight, um, but the other practitioners we felt were um, were certainly all personal service businesses. Yeah, I mean, that frankly is exactly why I asked the question. And Peter, I, could I just ask you one in your memo, you talk about either seven spaces or 11 spaces if you looked at the whole gross floor area. And I was just curious, do we typically just look at the net actual service and sales area as opposed to basing it on gross in a situation like this? Uh, normally we would, but as you look at the floor plan and you've got kitchen space, you've got some things that you wouldn't normally see in a personal service establishment. Uh, I did it both ways just to give you an idea of what the low and what the high end would be as you deliberate on this. I think it's more important to understand from the applicant how the business would actually be conducted you know rather than using the gross numbers so uh, i feel a lot more comfortable based on the explanation of you know how they will conduct things rather than just using the you know the high number anyway okay thanks so, so peter if i could just follow up so you, you're suggesting it should be seven then right it, it, it's probably somewhere in between but yeah this the seven number i'm i'm pretty comfortable with given uh, you know what they what they're proposing to do there okay. the only the only other question i had is there was a there's a room in the back that's uh, identified as a as a classroom so maybe we could get a better understanding of of uh, you know what that means and and how many people uh, might potentially come to that classroom at any point in time and how frequently that might happen uh, with regards to classes um, i do at times because I am a teacher, my classes aren't any more than three people at a time. And it's usually on a Sunday morning where there's not a lot going on. Um, I don't offer classes any other time but Sunday mornings, um, usually for a number of hours, but they tend to be very small, not just because of COVID restrictions, but even before COVID, um, it's hard to manage a class that's too big. So, okay. and, and um, yeah, so. P Peter David Drake, uh, just one. The, basically, the only question here is the parking, right? Well, it's it's a, it's a change of use too, but yes, I think. Yeah, the, but uh, I understand that. But. Yeah, the the issue comes down to parking, um, yeah. as, as as you guys are aware. Yeah. It's change of use because it's going from uh, residential back to business. Yes, the the previous owner had. Um, eliminated the business use and, and was using the property for residential purposes. So it went all the way back to a, a residential use uh, for, for a short period of time. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Um, if not, um, are there any members of the public that want to comment on this application? If you could either raise your physical or virtual hands so I can call on you. Norm's iPad. 
Can you just please give us your name and address for the record? I think you're muted. Are you asking me a question, Peter? No, I think I it works now. Is that better? There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, uh, Norm Cavoli, 14 Center Street, um, diagonally across from uh, 147 Main. And, you know, I don't have any problem with that kind of business. Uh, it's, if that's what the town needs, it seems to be fine. Uh, parking is a question. I don't think it's a problem. I've been watching parking since the Charles restaurant opened up and I gave Peter a little written survey. What I found is that uh, noon time and at evening when the restaurants open, the lot behind the firehouse fills up very quickly and cars will park illegally there and get ticketed. Uh, spots in Keeney are never full. The only full time was when Keeney had that Shakespeare festival it got filled up. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady seems very nice. She's trying to keep the cars parking away from this area. The Charles restaurant tried that too. They put up signs on the street. Please don't park here, use the public lots. We love our neighbors. I'm watching cars and a couple would pull up and drive away. Others would park there. On the busy nights, we would have about a third of the street filled with those signs. He has changed the signs. The signs now read no parking and people will not park there. They will pull up and pull away. Uh, about a third of the people, including myself, have taken down the parking signs. So they do park in front of the restaurant, in front of my house and further down. Even with no signs, cars only parked on the odd, the even side of Center Street and very few on the odd. So you can expect some of the customers will park on Main Street, maybe on Center Street towards Main Street. And I don't foresee that a problem. There's enough legal parking to park, you know, extra cars. If they park illegally, they'll get tickets. Uh, they will probably park on Main Street, but again, that should not be a problem. So unless someone has a major concern, I don't see why parking should be a factor in this decision. Any questions on parking that I can help you with? Now, Peter did share your, uh, your memo and your spreadsheet and actually it was very interesting and very, very helpful, not just for this application, but also to kind of get a better sense of how the, the signs work, you know, what the, you know, the parking behaviors generally have been and, and are, and uh, it was, it was um, at least to me, it was useful information just kind of generally yeah. as well as, you know, for this application. Yeah, yeah and busy nights uh, during the week, nighttime and on weekends, when this, you know, business won't be open, the uh, lots do fill up. Always room at Keeney, but not behind a firehouse. Main Street, I, I look at that, that looks awfully full also. And a few on Center Street. When the uh, tent comes down in the restaurant's parking lot, that's gonna open up 13 spots, 12 or 13. On the average, there was eight or nine cars with a high of 10 or 11 that parked on Center Street before the no parking signs went up. So if those no parking signs come down for whatever reason, cars that normally park on Center Street and Main Street could park in that parking lot. And it'll have less customers with no good eating outside, at least temporarily. So I don't think there'll be a great parking concern. And this business, as the uh, owner says, is only gonna act at four or five, six cars a day at the off times and not weekends. So parking should not be a major negative impact on this application. And noise certainly won't be. How come, how come nobody parks across the street on the ad side? Just laziness, nobody wants to walk across? 
No, I talked to Peter. I think he said it correctly. People are too nice. They will park on the even side, almost all the way down the street. And the street's fairly narrow, so they okay. will not park on the other side. This is with no signs. I was amazed to see that. Okay. One or two will. If I park my car out in the front with these no parking signs, a few will park behind me and a few will park in front. So on the average is maybe three or four cars, uh, but they, they park illegally sometime and they'll get tickets. But you know now with the no parking signs up, there's a total of three, four cars on the average on Center Street for the first hundred feet down from Maine. People on the street well, think, complain, go ahead. Well, I think also probably the vast majority of the patrons come in off Main Street rather than you know, backwards in through garden or woodland or something like that. Correct. Yeah. Yes, again, if they went to this other location at 147 Main, they would look on uh, the even side, the right side. And in front of the restaurant, he has a couple of handicapped yard signs. So people think that's handicapped parking, so they'll park there. In front of my house, there's no signs. So they park there. From there on, most uh, on the people on the even side left the no parking signs up, but more than half on the odd side took them down and people are parking in front of those houses. And on the average is five or six residents cars parked out there during the day. Okay. But when this park a lot opens up at the Charles restaurant, that should see a significant difference because there's no parking concerns last winter on Center Street. Some of it were because of the pandemic, his business probably wasn't as busy as he had hoped, but also they had that extra 10, 12, 13 spots. Right. All right, thank you. Okay. Does anyone else, anyone else in the public have any comments or questions? Anybody else? All right, if not, uh, we'll go back to the applicant and the commission. Uh, does the applicant have any further comments based on uh, Norm's testimony or anything that you'd want to cover before we adjourn the hearing? I don't think I have anything to add at this point. Okay. All right, any, uh, any final questions from the commission? If not, I guess I would make a motion to close. Well, Second. I, I guess bef before we do that, I have, I have one thing that I want to ask the applicant. I jumped the gun. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, would you be amenable to having a condition of the approval that you request that your customers use public parking? Oh, that would be fine. I'm doing that now. So that would be no different for me. So absolutely, I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, that's what I assumed, but I also thought that that might set a valuable precedent for others. Um, we've attempted to put similar requests in the past in, uh, you know, approvals where the site doesn't necessarily provide all of the parking on site that the regulations might require. So, yeah, she mentioned <clears throat> that in her presentation, but I think having that as like, you know, approval is contingent on using the public parking. I think that's, I think you're right. And I am, I'm certainly sympathetic to the whole community. I'm trying to add to it. I'm not trying to leave a very big footprint. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I live on Church Street right here in Old Weathersfield also. So, I mean, I know um, I'm, I, I have no problem, you know, making sure that anyone that visits 147 Main Street um, is, is told that they need to park on in, in the free parking. And um, I have no problem asking them to move, which I had to do at the Red Barn frequently because um, 130, 135 Main Street didn't like people parking back there. So at times I'd have to tell clients to please move their car and they never have a problem. They understand. Okay. No, I appreciate that. And I, I think, you know, we also have to bear in mind that, you know, well, 
you're committed to doing the right thing. This is a land use approval that runs with the building so that, you know, 20 years from now when you've had it with the Reiki and somebody else wants to take over, they're bound by the same conditions. That makes sense. Okay. All right. And Ryan had made a motion to close the public hearing and Joe had seconded it. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, hearing is closed. Does someone want to make a motion so that we can have a discussion? I would uh, move that we approve the application as presented and waive the provision of off street parking if we need to include that language. And I would make it subject to one condition, which is that the applicant will request that uh, patrons of the establishment use, um, I guess, the town public um, parking in the area. I'll second that. Okay, second by Mike. Is there any discussion? Is there any consideration? Do you see any need to put a uh, limit on this so it doesn't run with the property? So it's like a five year limit. So the next person comes in, change of use, we don't end up stuck. Well, I mean, if there is a change of use, they have to come back. Uh, I understand change is cha a different, someone who doesn't have her same interest that she lives right in the community and maybe not operate in the same fashion. I'm just bringing it up. All right, I'm, if uh, no one else, all right, I just up for discussion. If no one else uh, has any concerns, I'm done. If, if I could uh, uh, just kind of piggyback on that. Uh, Peter, uh, what would constitute a change in use that would require someone to come back and this whole parking issue then would kick up again? How, how would that play out just in the future? Just so the question was brought up, I'm curious now. Sure. Sure. So if um, if the retail space uh, was expanded beyond the floor plan, um, that would certainly trigger uh, an, an increased intensity in parking. Um, that's primarily the the, the biggest uh, one. Um, or if the you know kitchen was removed and some of the other spaces that aren't used for uh, personal service increased uh, in the square footage, that would also trigger another review by the commission. So there's a couple of, uh, and then obviously if it changed to another use completely, uh, it would have to come back. So it's always reviewed. Any Anything out of the public use, uh, I mean, this the current usage, right? Yes, yes. So thing, things like law office, real estate office, insurance office, doctor's office definitely would have to come back and we'd review it all over again? Yes. That'd be a different use, right? That would fall under the medical, uh, personal service, and you know, partial retail. So, so that's a dis separate and distinct category from office. I guess, Peter, the, the, the real question is: do you, do you foresee any scenario that could increase the in and out of this place without a review in the future? I mean, someone having the right to just increase the in and out traffic, more parking and would not have to come back to us. Is there any plausible scenario like that in your mind? Well, another another uh, Reiki master who wants to operate a wellness center with a small amount of retail, that would probably be it. So, uh, and we haven't seen too many of those. So it's, it's probably likely it would have to come back at some point in the future. All right. and, then, and, then, and then hopefully on top of that, as, as we've noted, we're, we're trying to work on adding parking in close proximity to this. So hopefully, at some point in the not so distant future, there'll be additional public parking available as well. And, um, you know, this uh, on this end of town, so. Peter, you mentioned the House of Images. Could you tell, tell us what that was about and if they ever came before us? So that, that was a frame shop uh, operated by uh, Charlie Ford and his wife. Uh, they, I believe, uh, had been operating the frame shop since 1974. Um, I don't think it back then went through 
planning and zoning. So uh, it was a, it was a long time business that, uh, as was just noted, only only closed a handful of years ago. I just wanted to mention that for the record. All right, thanks. Did anyone want to, you know, take any of these um, comments and add them as proposed stipulations to the motion, or are we comfortable going ahead? Hey, Richard, I, I'm pretty comfortable going ahead. I think it's low volume as is. And if in essence, you know, just about anything that gets changed has to come back to this commission. Uh, and I, I think we'll have another bite at the apple in the future. Uh, and I'm not comfortable putting, you know, an, an imposition on, on, uh, on this person and the business that they're trying to run. Uh, for a number of years. So I'd be okay with just leaving that off. I don't know what others think. I don't see I, any issue. I think it's good. I agree with that. And frankly, you know, I think that as, as presented, you know, the applicant made clear they're not, you know, they're not operating nights or Friday nights or Saturday nights. And it seems to me if somebody knew where to come in and go till 10 o'clock on both Friday and Saturday, you know, uh, I think that could potentially warrant us looking at it again as a material change even. And that to me is probably the only, the only thing that has potential you know, that, that we need to even worry about, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I still support and, and second Joe's uh, motion with that one stipulation. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else? Just kind of last call. If not, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Congratulations. Good luck, Aaron. Thank you. All right. Move on to item 3.2. Uh, application 2095-21Z, uh, Albinus Puskovicius, 613 Maple Street, special permit in accordance with section 36G4 for the construction of a 240 square foot storage shed at 613 Maple Street. And if you could just please identify yourself by name and address for the record and tell us what it is you're proposing to do. So my name is Albinas Bushkavichus, and I live in a six, at 613 Maple Street in Wethersfield. And uh, I'm planning to build a 240 square foot storage shed. I have a shed right now, but it's time to repair it. It's kind of start rotting little by little. And uh, I decided to build a little bigger. Uh, want to put all the furniture in the winter time there or bicycles because I have only one car garage and uh, I don't want to put stuff in a basement that's why I decided to build a bigger one and uh, nobody complained so far I neighbors are my relationship is good with neighbors and I never had problems with neighbors and uh, I don't think it's gonna block something. Uh, uh, I have like, there are trees in the backyard, neighbor's trees, so neighbors blocking and shed is not, not gonna be in the way any neighbors. Um, and that's it, I think. <laughs> Okay. So you're, are you going to keep the existing shed that's already back there and just put this one next to it or are you going to replace it? In the beginning, I, I thought I'm going to take it down, but uh, no, we're using fireplace insert in winter time. So I thought I'm just going to keep the wood in my old shed. I thought you were going to burn the old sheds. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, I'm just, right now I'm keeping wood outside. I'm putting tarp on the top, but I think it's 
it will be good space for the wood. Okay, so the wood with the tarp on it is what's next to the existing shed back there now? Yes, right now. Okay, okay. What are you going to put in the shed? Just yard stuff, like tools and lawnmowers, yes. that sort of stuff? Yeah, okay. lawn tractor, outside furniture and uh, bicycles. and. Uh, Not going to have electricity or plumbing in it? No, no. Okay, all right. So I see uh, the uh, new proposed shed is uh, 12 by 20. Um, how, how big is how big is the old shed? Uh, 10 by 14. Is the reason this is up uh, for our review because what it exceeds the allowable footprint that uh, a shed could be, Peter? At 200 yeah. square foot. 200, 200 square foot per uh, shed. You can have up to three accessory structures, but uh, none of them, uh, unless it would be a detached garage, can be uh, larger than 200 square feet each. So the deviation here is what, 40 square feet? 40 square feet, correct. So I'm just curious, a uh, question for, for you, uh, the applicant. Uh, are you building this? from scratch, could you change the dimensions or are you buying something already made? Is that why you're constrained to 240 and not 200? Uh, I'm building myself, uh, but uh, I have already already like uh, foundation blocks and uh, uh, frame, the bottom frame, 12 by 20. So you started the construction before you had the approvals? Yeah, actually I never did that before. So I didn't know actually. And that's why I stopped building and I wanna get approval. Okay. If you had known, would 200 square feet been enough? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. If I knew in the beginning, I, I'm, I think I would build right now like 10 by 20 and would be 200 square feet. But uh, because I start, started already, I have the frame. And uh, so if it's possible to get that permit, I would continue building that. All right. Anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? All right. If not, um, any members of the public that want to speak on this application? Anybody in the public? All right. Take that as a no. Anything else anybody has um, before we close the hearing? If not, someone want to make a motion? Motion close. Second. second. Oh. Oh, 20 okay. motion, motion by Jim, second by Ryan to close the public hearing. <laughs> um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, hearings closed. Uh, does someone want to make a motion for discussion? I'll make a motion, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we approve uh, the proposal to put a 240 square foot, uh, I guess, accessory building shed uh, as presented by uh, this applicant. Uh, so just to state my thinking and reasons on it is that uh, I mean, had he known, he probably would have would have stayed within the regulations. Apparently, he he did not know, and he's a little bit over. And given mm -hmm. that it's such a small percentage change above the 200, anyways, uh, I just don't see that it makes sense to have him undo and do extra work if he's already got a foundation in place and and framing. So uh, I think we should just proceed. 
uh, with that. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second. Yeah, I'll, I'll... All right, we'll give the second to Ryan. I'll, stop, further... I'll stop hoarding all the seconds, I promise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's okay. I have the last. I have the last one, Ryan. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't allow him to put anything in the forty square feet he's adding. Just has to leave that blank all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got to walk around in there somehow, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> but That's we'll tax him anyway. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor of the approval, please say aye. 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 Anybody Thank opposed? You. Any abstentions? Okay. Motion approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Next item 3.3, application 209721Z. Uh, Kathleen Bagley, Town of Weathersfield, 156 Prospect Street. Eleanor Book. Buck Wolf Nature Center special permit in accordance with section 36 for a 14 by 20 outdoor picnic pavilion at 156 Prospect Street. Good evening, <clears throat> excuse me, Kathy Bagley, Director of Parks and Recreation and Social and Youth Services for the town. Um, I'm here tonight with also with the president of the Friends Association, Pat Yagman, are um, a member of the board, Tom Linden, and the Nature Center director, who's also the town's youth development manager, Patrick Tellman. And we're here tonight to um, let you know that the friends um, have worked with staff to do a outdoor pavilion at the Nature Center, just beyond the back of the Nature Center. Um, and they're willing to donate the funds to have that happen. And what this will do is provide us with outdoor classroom space for the Nature Center for all the different programs that we run there. It would be a 14 by 20 foot pavilion with a concrete pad that was 16 feet by 22 feet. We're, um, we're excited about the opportunity to do this. And the process started as they always do with, <clears throat> with any park project. Um, it started at the park board. They made a recommendation to the town council to, to see, saying that it was a good project. Would the council accept the donation? The council did accept the donation, pending, as usual, all the different boards and commissions that we may need to go through for approval. So we're here at planning and zoning to, um, for that process for approval for the, um, the picnic, the pavilion that'll be outdoors. It's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay. Yeah, and the um, materials included a picture of what it looks like and where it would be both kind of on the ground and in aerial location. Where the red dot is no longer marking a tree. Yes. Does anybody on the commission have any questions for uh, Kathy or any of the other individuals here this evening? Kathy, just out of uh, interest, uh, one of the pictures uh, shows where it's going to be located. Like there's like a little green patch uh, and there's a red building behind that. What is that building? That's the Nature Center garage. There's a little garage between the nature, just past the nature center, the back of the nature center. And then we're gonna put the pavilion on the other side. Okay, all right, thank you. I, I've got a quick one, Kathy. Um, with the, will, will you be increasing enrollment during these various programs or number of events, or is this really gonna be used more to handle you know, programs and, and numbers of, of kids that you already have? Well, we, we do, we have a great summer camp program now that basically fills every summer. So this is going to be an enhancement to another area that we'll be able to use because it'll be slightly weather protected. We actually envision, in, even envision using it in the winter. We have a year round uh, preschool nature school programs that go year round and 
They try to be outside as often as they can. So we, we see it as an enhancement to what we're doing because a lot of our programs over there fill. Yeah. But it, it will also open up opportunities for other programming also. Okay, and Peter, is this similar to the last one where basically 280 square feet, but if it was 200, they wouldn't have to be here with a special permit? Exactly. Okay. And Kathy, did you already build the foundation? <laughs> we haven't done anything. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> we should have. <laughs> we built it a little bigger. All right. Anyone else have any questions? If not, I've got a quick question. Um, sure, Dave. Roof is going to just drain off into the lot, right? There's no gutters on the pavilion. Breaking up. He's asking if there are going to be any gutters on the roof or is it just going to drain off onto the lot? Um, Tom, or it, it's the pavilion itself is 14 by 20. We made the pad 16 by 22 so that any water coming off the roof would land on the concrete as opposed to landing on soil and creating a mud bath for poor Patrick to have all those little muddy kids running around. So the pad's bigger than the pavilion itself. All right, anyone else? If not, this one also is a public hearing. So I would ask if there are any members of the public that want to uh, comment on this application. Anybody from the public? All right. If not, any Mr. final Chair questions? Mr. Yes. Chairman, just for the record, there is a there was an email submitted by Mary Frazier uh, in support uh, of the application. And I think that was in your packet. Yep. Yeah, and she's across the street on Prospect. Yep. All right. Anything else from anybody? If not, is there a motion to close the hearing? Make a motion to close. Right. Second. All right. Motion by Jim, second by Mike to close the hearing. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? OK, hearing's closed. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to um, start discussion? I, I will make a motion to start discussion. What is I would, your motion? Uh, I, I, would, uh, <laughs> I would propose that we uh, um, approve uh, the, the application as submitted. OK. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion by Mike, seconded by Joe. Does anyone have any uh, proposed stipulations, comments, questions? This is a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm just All glad right. the kids during the summer have some shade. <laughs> and thank you, Tom, too, for like clarifying because I did have a question I was going to ask about the pad underneath um, the structure as well. But you guys, uh, you know, thank you to you uh, and Kathy as well for your presentation. All right, if there's nothing else, um, motion made and seconded, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, and just a, special, just a special shout out to the friends to thank you for funding it. We really appreciate it. No problem. We can't wait to get it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, thank you all. All right. Have a good evening. You too. All right. All right. Other business. Uh, nothing is listed. Minutes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is listed. Staff reports. <laughs> Peter, do you have anything that you want to share with us this evening? Uh, just um, 
uh, I, I did send out an email, but just uh, FYI, we have moved the Salute to Business event up from normal its normal time in December to October 20th. This year, we're going to do it at the River Restaurant uh, as they have both outdoor and indoor uh, capacity. So if anyone uh, wants to attend that, please uh, let me know and we'll add you to the, uh, the roster of invitees. Uh, the only other thing to bring to your attention is we received uh, three uh, zoning regulation amendment referrals, one from the city of Hartford and two from uh, the town of Newington regarding some changes to their uh, regulations. Um, just uh, for your information, uh, the one in one of the ones in Newington is in response to the recent um, uh, public act uh, 21, I think it's 27 regarding uh, eliminating uh, minimum parking requirements for uh, different forms of residential development. So uh, just an FYI on, on that. Other than that, uh, nothing else to report. Peter, can, can you just give me a little more understanding of what that minimum requirements about? Sure. Um, there was a recent uh, set of uh, legislative changes uh, most of which was designed to eliminate uh, restrictive uh, zoning uh, requirements for uh, to assist with the creation of more affordable housing across the state. Uh, one of the um, one of the changes affected minimum parking requirements. Um, they felt that uh, many communities had overly restrictive uh, minimum parking requirements for different forms of residential development. And the statute uh, is uh, basically stating by a certain point in time, towns have to review those regulations and make changes that uh, coincide with the legislative uh, requirements. So in this case, Newington is um, reducing, let me just turn to that real quick. Let's see here. Uh, is eliminating uh, and reducing some of their parking requirements. Um, I think that I think the statute said for certain uh, size uh, number of bedrooms, you can only re require one parking space per unit. So their uh, present regulations are a little more restrictive than that. So they're knocking them down in certain cases to match that those requirements. Yeah, I mean, essentially, the statute says that if if you have parking requirements for residential dwellings, you can't require more than one parking space for a studio or a one bedroom. And you can't require more than two parking spaces for any dwelling unit of two bedrooms or more. So if, for example, you have a requirement that you have one and a half parking spaces, you know, for a one bedroom unit on the theory that you know, it might be a couple living there or you want to have, you know, flexibility or, you know, just basically be conservative in terms of the number of uh, parking spaces that are going to be required. If you want to have a parking requirement that is higher than what the state statute provides, you have to actually go through the effort of opting out of the statutory requirement um, by a two-thirds vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission and a two-thirds vote of the legislative body of the town, which would be, you know, like the, the town council or the board of selectmen. Okay. Yes, what he said. <laughs> and so if, if, if we, how have we dealt with that in Weathersfield? Uh, we haven't gone through this process yet. Um, just so you know, we did get an affordable housing uh, planning grant. So we'll be going through uh, a process in the relatively near future. And we'll be looking at uh, all of our present regulations regarding affordable housing and, and making some uh, recommendations for you guys to consider. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks very much. Um, next item, public comments on general matters of planning and zoning. Anybody from the public wishing to comment on anything that uh, wasn't already discussed on the agenda? 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the last meeting, but with us tonight is our new recording secretary, uh, Lauren. You can see her uh, on the screen there. She did provide um, the minutes from uh, last meeting. I just didn't get a chance to review and edit them to include them in tonight's packet, but we'll do that for your next meeting. But I want to welcome Lauren aboard. Welcome, Lauren. Welcome, welcome. Lauren. Yeah, that was the member of the public that I was trying to get to speak so <laughs> yeah we know tom yeah and he's always shy <laughs> all right uh no correspondence pending applications looks like we have some good and yes. fun and productive things coming up here yeah um, it should be a should be a busy meeting at the at the next next one um so we may have to just kind of adjust the agenda to get through everything this there's some a couple of them might be a little bit weighty. I know that um, we have an interim town manager. Do you think that there's any reasonable likelihood that we'll be getting back together in person before too long? Actually, I had a we had a staff meeting today, and uh, I did pose the question because the council is now meeting in person if that uh, also applies to the boards and commissions. Uh, so I, I've already advertised your next meeting as a Zoom meeting, but the meetings after that, uh, if the commission is so inclined, can be in person. So I wanted to um, have you discuss that and, and give me the appropriate uh, direction on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess you know, it, it would be nice to get back together in person, but if we have a, you know, a really light agenda, you know, it might be worth just sticking with Zoom to ensure that we have a quorum because our our one in-person meeting in the last 20 months, you know, we barely managed to scrape together five people to participate. Okay. So let's, um, you know, depending on the agenda, let's assume that the uh, first meeting in December, uh, we'll try and make that in person. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, you have the, you know, leaving aside the whole pandemic situation, I mean, you have the, the legal noticing lead time of basically a month before we could pull the trigger on anything anyway. Right. All right. Does anyone else have anything they want to talk about this evening? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Oh, yes. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Go Red Sox. Go Red Sox. Oh. <laughs> I was the waiting for word. that. I like that. The last word. Ha, ha, ha.